Well, happy birthday to my solar panels. It's been exactly one year since I've had them installed. And I've got to say, they've been amazing, to be honest. There's absolutely nothing um, wrong with them. Nothing's gone wrong. I've just let them carry on and do their thing sort of day in, day out for 365 days. The only thing I've really had to play about with is the amount of charge that I've decided to put in the battery uh, during the year. And that's been it really. So in this video, I'm gonna look through the last year and have a look at my solar generation for the full 12 months. I'm gonna see how much I've exported and I'm gonna see how much I've imported on the daytime rate and how much I've actually uh, used imported overnight on Octopus Go and other few things like that as well. So let's get into it. But before we get into the stats, let's just remind ourselves of my solar panel system. Uh, so 14 Jinko 390 watt panels, uh, totaling 5.4 kilowatts, 10 on the south and four on the east, and a solar edge four kilowatt inverter so that's the solar side. On the battery side, we've got the three kilowatt AC inverter and the eight kilowatt Gen 1 Give Energy battery. And then of course, I've got a few extra bits and bobs such as the My Energy Eddy heating the hot water, the Harvey and the Hub, and the Hypervolt EV charger. So this is the solar generation from the Solar Edge dashboard. As you can see here, we started in March 22. On the 23rd of March, that was the first day that it was receiving data and then if I just fast forward to this year you should see that just 20 the 22nd was the day that was last finished which is today and so it's been a complete year of production you can also see that here where I've got the uh, 2022 months in blue and then solar edge have added on the 2023 data in green well, we've got the overlap in March. So March last year was 197. And this year it's 261. So if you add those two together, we get 458. Although it was 347 last month. So I don't think we're going to get 458 in 2023. But we'll have to wait and see at the end of the month. Right, let's look at each section. Uh, starting with the solar generation. So we started off in March with 197 in the last week of March 2022, which was a very sunny last week of March, uh, which was brilliant uh, for the solar production. And then moving into April, straight away 7.30, 7.38 in May. And then June, July and August all seemed to peak my system really at about kind of 7.85 seems to be the most um, I'm going to get out of my setup. Uh, we'll have to see if that's true this year. And then the drop off to September of 5.30 and then 4.76 in October. Uh, and then the big drop, really, November and December, 180 and 166 kilowatt hours. And then slowly coming back up again in January to 2.43. And then in February, a really good February, 3.47. And so far in March, um, up until the dates that link together, 2.61 for the month of March. But look out for my video uh, for the end of March or beginning of April to see how March uh, finished. So overall, uh, for the whole year, and I've rounded these numbers down, so I've taken the decimal points away, but we're looking at 6,219 kilowatt hours uh, for the whole year. So I'm very happy with that. Um, I used to use something like 5,000 and something in total when I was importing from the grid. But we'll have a look uh, during the video to see or try and work out how much I've actually saved over this 12 months. This is the layout of the panels on my roof. So I've got the four panels there on the east side and the 10 on the south. So this is the total for the full uh, 12 months that I've been running the panels. So 6.25 uh, megawatt hours, and this is how it's worked out. I can go to that by going to um, the totals on there, on the layouts. Because I've got the optimizers on the panels, I can actually see what each panel is up to, as opposed to seeing just what each kind of um, string array is doing in total. So each panel on the south side has kind of been around the 472, 473 kilowatt hours for the year 
and the uh, east side has been 3 what 387 390 even on those four panels so you can really tell the difference uh, over 12 months of what you would get on a clear sky on the east and uh, clear sky on the south right now onto the solar export so when the panels were put in in march it took uh, a while to actually get paid for the export uh, which was a real pain and there was no way of kind of following that up you just had to wait so we signed up to octopus uh, to take over our solar export meter and pay us and that came online about the second week in may in the end so as you can see here didn't get paid anything from march and april when they were installed uh, we just had to use as much of it as we could and then from may onwards we exported uh, 246 june 287 july 288 at the standard kind of seven and a half pence rate as it was then uh, so we were getting sort of 18 pounds 21 pounds 21 pounds a month which was nice because it kind of started to cover the standing charge and then in kind of june we were actually we actually had the battery installed so then we started to kind of export a little bit less um august onwards really um as we were putting a bit more into the battery instead of exporting it and then late july um early august we moved to octopus go that's why the rate had changed from seven and a half pence to 4.1 and that's what it is still that i'm still on 4.1 pence per kilowatt hour that i export which is pretty poor and that's why um, the numbers the amount of money looks a lot lower as well but obviously i'm also exporting a lot less try and export as little as possible and try and use as much as possible mainly because i'm at home during the day and i can use it if i wasn't here during the day then those export numbers would be a lot lot higher i imagine although don't forget you do export a lot less uh, during winter because there just isn't um, enough as much should I, should I say as as much sun about as there would be normally during the summer as you'd expect so in the end um, we exported 1263 kilowatt hours for the year and we got paid a total of 79 pounds and 70 pence so now on to the daytime running costs uh, from the grid now when we had the panels put in in march as i say we didn't have the battery until june so it was good in a way because we lived with solar panels only um, for those first couple of months and it was a good way to learn uh, what it's like to not have a battery really brilliant during the day and then as soon as that sun disappears you obviously import from the grid so these numbers kind of reflect that as well so we haven't had a full year with the battery yet even though we've had a full year with the solar panels so to start off with march obviously was low because it was just one week i'm including here we imported 48 kilowatt hours nine pounds 86 that was when we were on 20 pence a kilowatt hour during the day and obviously those increases then came in in april as you can see 29 pence it then jumped to in april for a full month and may we had 167 and 179 kilowatt hours imported during the day uh, at 48 and 51 pounds so you know we were living with solar then june comes and you can see the big difference there when the battery is uh, installed that the the rate has dropped down immensely uh, in june we used 75 and then it really did drop so august was nine september was eight october was eight and then basically november came uh, and the winter came and we started to use um, a little bit more during the daytime when basically the battery had a little bit of shortfall during those months and sometimes the it was a really dark rainy day the eight kilowatt hour battery would not um, last all day long until the next charging period overnight so it would sometimes fail at about fail i shouldn't say fail uh, it would run out at about kind of 10 o'clock at night nine o'clock at night if it was really bad but no earlier i would say than sort of 8 p.m to be honest so we had a little bit of electrical costs there uh, over the winter months so in total uh, we actually used 604 daytime kilowatt hours 
which was added up to a daytime cost for the year of £185.35. So this shows my Go costs. So we moved to Go in late July. As you can see there by the zeros, because we didn't use anything overnight until uh, early August. So the reason why we went to go was one, because we wanted to charge the EV more um, overnight and also because I was getting ready for the winter and I wanted to make sure that I could charge the battery overnight to 100% on cheap rate electric. Uh, for the sort of six months of the winter. So that's the reason why I moved to Octopus Go. We basically ramped up the use of Go uh, as we came into the winter. We started off with a little bit in August and September. That was mainly EV charging overnight. Uh, and then we didn't really start sort of really putting the battery on 100% until kind of November time, I don't think. Um, whereas we went... Uh, to charging the uh, i3 every night well I say every night it was probably about five or six nights a week from November so we're kind of hitting those November December January February numbers now where we're hitting the high 500s uh, 600 kilowatt hours a month on go but I, what I did manage to actually split it up so I could work out from uh, give energy uh, what the battery had imported uh, overnight from the grid. And then basically I just deducted um, though the overall go numbers that I got from Octopus from the uh, battery numbers that Give Energy gave me. So that should have worked me out for me the sort of EV um, costs and how much kilowatt hours we put in the EV over the uh, year. Well, I say year. As, he's, as I said, I didn't really get go until August. So it's not been a full year of go, but I just wanted to kind of include those figures because uh, I want to look at the costs of how much that costs at the end really as well. So the battery costs, not too much uh, for every night, really. £15 a night, seven, uh, £15 a night, £15 a month, £17 a month, that sort of thing so in total uh, to fill up the battery for those winter months so far or for the year um, has been 84 pounds obviously it's not a full year I keep saying this but it's true and the go costs overall has been 223 pounds this is at the 7.5 pence rate which I know it's going to go up and it's currently 12 and a half pence per kilowatt hour um, so it will probably be about that when I move to it and renew in July in 2023 and the EV costs um, 139 pounds for that so 139 pounds and 84 pounds gives us the 223 so if we look at the costs for the year the daytime cost uh, was 185.35 the go cost was 223 and 46 pence for the overnight charging of the battery and the car and the if we minus off the export 79 pounds and 70 pence it comes out at 329 pounds and 11 pence for the full year although next year i expect obviously for the next uh, 12 months i expect that to change i expect the daytime cost to actually come down because we didn't have um, the battery for the first couple of months where we used uh, normal sort of electricity in the evenings so i'm expecting that cost to come down uh, the go cost i'm expecting to go up mainly because we hadn't had a full year of charging uh, one of the EVs, the i3 overnight for a full year. So I'm expecting that to go up. Plus I'm expecting the seven and a half pence um, go rate that I'm on now to increase to, well, it's currently on 12 and a half. So somewhere around that. So I'm expecting that number to go up quite a lot. Um, and I expect the export will possibly stay around the same because we had a couple of months uh, where we didn't get paid for the export. So I'm expecting that to be similar if circumstances stay the same. So probably the cheapest year that I'll have for a while. Right, so now we're going to look at or try and work out how much I might have saved over this year of solar. 
traditionally I believed we used to use about 14 kilowatt hours a day so that works out to be 5110 kilowatt hours now if I use the 33.2 pence per kilowatt hour cost which it is at the moment under the kind of price guarantee scheme in March 2023 that works out to be a cost for the year of £1,696 for electric. Um, so I know the rate has kind of moved up and down this year, but I'm going to kind of take that as a ballpark kind of figure and work out my numbers from that. So if we look at then at the daytime cost was £185. And then my overnight battery cost on go was 84 pounds for the year now i haven't included the ev charging in this because uh not everyone has an ev and i've had um you know the benefit of that so i'm just going to look at this from taking that out so that comes to when i add those two numbers up 269 pounds and 73 pence but if i minus off my what I predict my water heating would have been for six months over the summer. Now we didn't spend any money on a gas bill whatsoever, except for standing charge uh, for the six months of summer because the boiler was turned off and we got the eddy to heat the hot water. So I believe uh, that that would have cost the gas cost would have been about a pound a day to heat the hot water over summer. So 180 days in six months, gives us 180 pounds so if I minus that off the 269 and then the I need to subtract the export which we got 79 pounds for leaves us with a cost of 10 pounds so that still means that I've saved around the 1700 pounds a year mark that's what I'm kind of working this out to be now I've probably saved more than that because I bought myself an EV uh, when was that September time and I've sort of been charging that during the day when there's been excess solar as well so I've been getting those miles for free and I haven't kind of included those so then if we look at what the install cost me uh, it was eleven and a half thousand pounds at the time I've kind of gone through a video on that if you want to look at that about how much it cost me originally and then I bought an eddy which cost me about 500 pounds um, on top so twelve thousand pounds and so then if i divide that by around the 1700 a year that i think i'm saving gives me um, a payback of seven years so i think it's going to take about seven years to pay back what i spent based on what i'm saving now that's at 33 pence if that drops on that kilowatt hour you know i'm going to be taking a bit longer to pay it back but if that price goes up uh, then it's going to be shorter and if I can make savings in any other place then uh, my year's payback will get lower but I think seven years is, is not bad and I've had one year already um, so that's dropped now to six years and I've extended the warranties on most things so I've got 10 year warranty on the give energy inverter and the battery and I've gone for 25 years on the uh, solar edge inverter so that's it a full 12 months of solar would I change anything? Uh, possibly. Uh, I'd love to have more solar panels on the roof, but unfortunately I haven't got any more space. Um, the only other thing was that on the original order, I was going to order a solar edge five kilowatt inverter because the panels add up to just over five kilowatts. Um, and unfortunately at the time they were out of stock. So I had a four kilowatt instead. Um, whether I regret that or not I don't know because I just wanted to get them installed to be honest and not have any delays uh, would I be generating more probably a little bit more but how much more I'll never really know but thanks for watching uh, I hope you enjoyed the video if you did give us a like and don't forget to subscribe to the channel and I'll see you soon